Welcome, my dear friends. Myself, Professor Dr. Rajendra Raghuvir Deshpande, would like to welcome you all in this interesting video, which is related with the very common problem nowadays, that is hyperthyroidism. You know, we have the thyroid gland over here, and it this gland is very, very important in our human physiology, in our human body, because it is controlling different types of the metabolic process. It may be the metabolism of proteins, it may be the metabolism of the carbohydrate, it may be the metabolism of the fat, but thyroid gland is very important in our body because it is controlling basal metabolic rate, BMR. BMR is very essential process in the human body. And if this gland hormones are activating too much, that is called as a hyperactivity. And sometimes it is a low activity that is hypothyroidism. So there are two types of the abnormalities in the thyroid gland. It can be the hyperthyroidism or it can be the hypothyroidism. So this is an endocrine gland problem, hormonal problem. But nowadays, this problem is very common. So this video is very useful for the medical students, for the medical doctors, as well as the common man to develop their general awareness about the thyroid gland. So let us start with this interesting topic, hyperthyroidism and allopathic treatment. Okay. So myself is Professor Dr. Deshpande. I welcome you all in my Ayurveda Academic channel. I am MD in Ayurvedic Medicine, Thai Chikitsa, and MD in Ayurvedic Physiology, that is Kriyashari. For paid online consultation or paid online classes of BMS, you can WhatsApp me on 922-681-0630. Okay, so let us start with this interesting topic. But before that, let me clear you that this video is available in my playlist of allopathic and Ayurvedic treatments for diseases. This is the name of the playlist and also Kai Chikitsa, this is one of the name of the playlist. Now, you can see this is here. It is a thyroid gland. And here you can see the voice box by which we can speech out that is larynx. And here you can see the trachea. So on the two sides of this larynx and the trachea, there are the lobes of thyroid gland, which are attached to the right lobe and the left lobe and attached by the one of the joint that is isthmus. Okay. So thyroid system, you can see the basic control is in your brain. Hypothalamus is giving signal to the anterior pituitary gland that is also in the brain. Okay. And that particular pituitary gland has a thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, that we can test in the blood in the laboratory. Okay. But hypothalamus is giving also signal to this main master gland that is pituitary gland, thyrotropin, releasing hormone, TRH. And then that is why pituitary gland gives the signal to the thyroid gland by thyroid stimulating hormone and this thyroid gland secreting thyroid hormones which are named as t3 and t4 they are responsible for increased metabolism growth and development and increase the catecholamine effect okay so here you can see a typical feature that x of thalmos eyes are bulging out that is a feature of goiter so this is a typical characteristic feature of goiter or hyperthyroidism. Here you can see the thyroid gland is also enlarged. But this bulging eyes is a typical feature. Okay. So thyroid problems at puberty, it is a little bit different than the problems in the adult. This is a simple goiter. Young girls at puberty, they are suffering from thyroid problems at puberty at the age of 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. Swelling in front of the neck, swelling is soft, diffuse, or maybe nodular, but it is painless, non-tender. If you touch it, no pain. That is non-tender and more up and down while deglutition. You can ask the patient to drink sip by sip a glass of water. So, so here you can see the movement, okay? Up and down movement with deglutition. There are no other symptoms of hyper or hypothyroidism. This is very much differential diagnosis. How you can say that this particular thyroid problem at the puberty is a simple goiter because of the deficiency, no problem huh? because of the deficiency of the hormone. So there will not be any other symptoms 
of typical hyperthyroidism and typical hypothyroidism that is myxedema. So no other symptom, only swelling, okay, Dif soft, diffuse or, or with some nodules, it is painless, no tenderness and more up and down movement with the deglutition and swelling in front of the neck. These are only symptoms. Treatment, first you give the assurance, not a serious disease, nothing to be worried about. This is normal in the puberty. So assurance is very important. Say the patient, that young girl and the parents, this is harmless and that particular swelling will go down, regress automatically, even without the treatment, go automatically, okay? But sometimes some supplements are given like tablet ultroxin, 100 milligram, morning, afternoon, evening, three times in a day for three months. Then gradually come, dose should be uh, come, come down, then one BD, only morning and evening for one year. First, three times in a day, three months. Then gradually taper, reduce the dose, only two times in a day for one year. Soft diffuse goiters. Soft diffuse goiter comes down, regress automatically. But sometimes there may be some nodules and at that time there may be necessity of remove thyroidectomy. Tomy means to cut, thyroidectomy. But this is very rare occasion. Okay, so that we have talked about thyroid problems at puberty. Now, we will typically start with the proper disease hyperthyroidism or it is also called as thyrotoxicosis, toxic, thyrotoxicosis because the symptoms are like toxic. Usually, this occurs in females. The patient, that particular female will complain rapid and excessive loss of weight. That lady will say, doctor, since last three, four months, I'm losing my weight. I don't know. I'm eating well. I'm eating well, but still I'm losing weight. I'm feeling tired and there will be palpitation. Huh? So loss of weight in spite of the normal appetite or maybe increased appetite. Huh? Because in tuberculosis, anorexia, loss of appetite, weight loss. In the cancer, loss of appetite, weight loss. In HIV AIDS, loss of appetite, weight loss. This is very clear. But there are two diseases like diabetes mellitus or thyrotoxicosis when the patient has a normal or excessive appetite. He eating, he's eating well, but still he is losing weight. Immediately, yes, it may be the problem of thyroid in spite of the normal appetite. Weight loss with reduced appetite indicates tuberculosis. Weight loss with excessive appetite indicates the diabetes mellitus. So this is very interesting to note. Dr. Deshpande has given you the clue. Huh? See, loss of weight, normal appetite. What is that? Thyrotoxicosis, thyroid problem. Loss of weight with loss of appetite, tuberculosis or cancer or HIV. But weight loss with excess polyphagia, polydipsia, Huh? You know this, polyuria, these are the three P's in the diabetes mellitus. I have one interesting video before this thyrotoxicosis. I have uploaded the diabetes mellitus two videos. Please check it out. Okay. Then another interesting feature because basal metabolism is increased. So patient cannot tolerate hot climate. He's all the time very hot, very hot, heat in the body, sweat excessively, fan use. This is very interesting. Everybody should note this point. The patient will use the fan even in the winter. In the November, December in the India, the people are, oh my God, cold is there. But this patient is having excessive heat because of the hyperthyroidism. Metabolic processes are increased. So this patient will need air conditioning or fan in the month of winter like November and December in Maharashtra, Pune, in India, okay? Another interesting feature, the patient has palpitation. What is palpitation? The understanding of our own heart sounds. Normally, our hearts beats like lup, dup, lup, dup, lup, dup. We cannot hear this sound normally, normal person. But this patient, dhaka dhaka karane laga. Oh, mera jiya dhaka dhaka karane laga. So there will be, patient is, feeling himself that my heart is pumping. That is not normal. That is called as a palpitation. In Ayurveda, it is called as a Rudra Drava. Okay. 
on examination these are all signs a symptoms previous it was symptom now what doctor will find when he examine the patient first he will note pulse rate normally 72 per 280 per minute but in this thyrotoxicosis hyperthyroidism tachycardia that means excessive pulse it may be 100 per minute 110 per minute 120 per minute pulse rate okay so but interesting is if you run after running marathon after running after jumping after exercise pulse rate is increased but in this in this thyrotoxicosis even the patient is at rest even he is sleeping the pulse rate is high which is abnormal then swelling of the thyroid gland x of thalamus i have shown you the picture then fine tremors can you see my hand is shaking these are the tremors fine tremor if you put the some paper over it the paper will move these are called as the fine tremors huh? outstretched hand okay so what doctor can do advise the patient prescribe t3 t4 go to the laboratory pathological laboratory examine your blood and you can check t3 hormone t4 hormone what is the quantity and also tsh thyroid stimulating hormone now interesting is t3 t4 when they are increased there is a less demand for tsh so tsh will on the lower side in hyperthyroidism t3 t4 high tsh low but in hypothyroidism which will be my next video t3 t4 will be down and when this is inversely proportional then tsh will be high are you getting my point but this is very interesting not all the values are high t3 t4 increase but tsh is decreased so what can be the treatment doctor doctors want doctor tell, tell us treatment Tab, ready made prescription for the doctors students tablet neomarcazole 5 mg two tablets morning two tablets afternoon two tablets evening two tds okay 5 mg tablet carbimazole this is the generic name this is the trade name or the brand name generic medicines are always cheap now there are generic shops are also available carbimazole okay how 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 what time you should give till the tsh is normal or symptoms are symptoms are under control then gradually you can reduce the dose in spite of two tablets morning afternoon evening you can give one morning one afternoon one evening for one year total one year you have to give okay then for palpitation tablet ciplar propranolol 10 milligram tablets morning afternoon evening to control the palpitation or tachycardia then tablet alprax this is brand name but this is alprazolam generic name alprazolam generic name and this is trade name i give you the same for the students paracetamol is a generic name crocin is a brand name dolo is a brand name are you getting the difference generic and brand names okay this is a tranquilizer to cool down your mind because when there is a stress this thyroid problem increases more okay so this is all about treatment note if the patient cannot be maintained or controlled with medicines these medicines we are giving even after one year the patient is not responding or temporarily it is reduced but even after six months immediately there is again development of symptoms which is called as a recurrence so two conditions are there patient is not responding for the symptoms even after one year or it is coming down symptoms but again coming that is recurrence then basically general practitioner better should refer these cases to the endocrinologist who is a specialist of these hormones or endocrine system then there are three alternatives higher types of the drug therapy or radioactive iodine can be given or finally the last but not least surgery also can be done at the last major of this treatment when to do the surgery when to do surgery inadequate response to the medical treatment number one indication larger goiter very big serious thyrotoxicosis symptoms are intolerable and intolerance to neomarcazole 
patient cannot tolerate neomarcazole, then there is no alternative that surgeon can or endocrinologist can say, okay, remove this gland. Okay. What is radioactive iodine? Radioactive iodine treatment is preferred in the following conditions in spite of the tablet. When the age is 45 years, then recurrence after surgery or high operative risk patient. Age is more, patient has a poor morbidity, uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled heart problem, then surgery cannot be done. In that case, radioactive iodine is an alternative. Okay. So my dear friends, today's discussion about the hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis, but this is an educational video. So disclaimer, if anybody of you viewers are suffering from cerebral palsy, arthritis, autoneuron disease, cancer, attention deficit hyperactive disorder in the children, CP, cerebral palsy, ITP, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, or any such type of chronic or autoimmune diseases, Ayurveda Academy has a number of team of the doctors, the different specialists. So you can definitely approach us with 922-681-0630 for paid online consultation. So I request all of you to like this video, share this video, and please don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and give me the strong boost for my this type of the activity. I wish all the best. Take care and bye-bye.